Hey guys, so whether you're courting, flirting, dating, or in a committed relationship, you're gonna want to avoid these five things you're still doing that turn women off. Now you have to realize that men and women have different needs, especially when it comes to getting ready for intimacy. And for a woman, foreplay begins right after her last, oh my golly. So if you keep doing the things that turn her off, it becomes much harder to turn her on. And then when you do the things that usually work, but don't right now, you're left confused and wondering how you can ever please her. And while this isn't just about couch wrestling, there is one time when you actually don't have to do anything to get her ready for physical intimacy. So let's find out what you're still doing that turn women off and what you can do instead. If you're new to my channel, my name is Anna Jorgensen. Welcome to Just The Tip Tuesday. So just before we get into it, I just wanna acknowledge, because I get a lot of comments from guys saying, you need to talk to women about what they need to do. Well, I would accept that this is a channel for men, so I'm just here to decode women for you. And hopefully there's gonna be some women watching this so they can actually pay attention and maybe change some of their behaviors that aren't working for them either. So first let's get into flirting and courting. Flirting is basically making your sexual interest known with the three T's, which are teasing, touching, and tension. And courting is when you've already made your interest known and are still using the three T's, but then are also using the three I's. Interest, info, intimacy. Now, if you want me to do a video just on flirting, then let me know in the comments. In the meantime, what you don't want to do when you're flirting or courting are one, sexual focus. A guy friend of mine, straight guy friend, said to me once, and I'll never forget it, a guy won't cross the street for you unless he's interested. And what he means is interested in something more than friendship. Women instinctively know this. If you're paying attention to her somewhere, unless she's really insecure and no guys ever hit on her or spend any attention on her, which is very rare, she's got any market value. Somewhere inside her, she knows that if you are giving her attention, you are interested in her romantically or physically. She knows you wanna get into your birthday suit with her. So when you make inappropriate, overt and obvious, comments about T and A, then it comes across as creepy and inappropriate and a turnoff. Unless you're Chad and unless, even if you're Chad, the surprising th time when you don't have to do anything and she'll be ready for it. And this applies even if you're not a Chad actually, but I'll tell you that later. But for now, just remember that women speak a thousand shades of hint. So she can even feel your energy toward her if you have a romantic or physical or sexual interest in her. Now there are times where it is appropriate to talk very overtly about TNA, but initially you need to be careful about it and you want to keep it to an innuendo where it's sort of implied, but it could be taken a different way that doesn't mean TNA. So there's a little bit of mystery in there and you don't want to overdo it. So overdoing sexual focus just makes you creepy and is a turnoff for women. So for example, if you are bragging about the size of your package <laughs> or your sexual skills, when it hasn't been requested overtly by the girl, that's gonna be really obvious, unless she's brought it up first. Now again, there's one time when this doesn't actually apply. So if you think you know what it is, write it in the comments. I'm curious if you can guess it right, and no, it's not actually being a Chad or Tyrone, but I will share that with you a little later. But let's get into the next thing that a lot of men do that turn women off. Okay, ready for it? Two, overt bragging. So we kind of, Touched on that, touched on that when talking about the size of your junk, but 
here it is. If you are overt about trying to impress her, which is understandable, you want her to know that you have value, but again, she speaks a thousand forms of hint. So instead of saying, yeah, I own a Land Rover, you can subtly say, I've got to take the truck into the shop or I've got to take the Rover into the shop. So it's whatever, it's, it's, it's a lot more subtle. She will connect the dots between, oh, okay, he drives a decent vehicle. He's got to be successful enough that he's probably not in debt. Well, she'll assume you're not in debt up to your eyeballs or and I know you guys are all going to go into, oh, she just wants money. No, I've gone over that way a lot in my hypergamy videos. So watch for that, but I won't go into it more here. It's more about how she feels safe with you and your relationship with money. Let's move on. The point is women are constantly consciously and subconsciously evaluating everything you say and translating that into potential relationship proofs. So what do I mean by that? I mean that if you say, I can't make it Saturday morning because I'm committed to going to the gym, she's not gonna see that as a brag because you're so fit. She's going to be like, oh, okay, one, he's got commitments and I'm not being put on a pedestal. That's actually good. And two, she's gonna respect that, okay, you're fit and healthy. So those are two social proofs that go into her little accounting jar of your potential relationship market value. And again, there's one time when this won't apply, I will share it later, where you can pretty much almost do anything, as long as you don't get it wrong, you're gonna, you're gonna get some. But the point is, however much money you have, or however successful you are, or whatever accomplishments you've made, whatever your value is, unless she's a shallow gold digging hoe, which yes, there are plenty of those out there, the way you reveal these proofs will determine whether she sees you as humbly confident or unattractively insecure. And this will vary a bit depending on the girl because sometimes a woman needs a little bit more overtness, but most women will definitely read between the lines to see your worth when you're providing subtle evidence of it. So just keep this key point in mind. The more overtly a man is about showing his proof of value, bragging, the more likely a high value woman will see that as insecurity and or shallow. Example, let's go back to the Land Rover. Could be a Ford F-150. Anyways, whatever it is that you're driving, she's going to assume some things about you when you roll up in your vehicle. But let's say you do have an expensive vehicle. If you have to tell her how expensive it is <laughs> and that it's the new model and it costs X dollars, then she's going to think you need to prove your worth to her. And she's going to automatically, unconsciously in this case, assume that she has higher value than you because you're needing to impress her. Let me say that in a different way. The more you construct your words to prove your worth, the more she assumes your worth is less. The more she's going to question your worth. So you need to be subtle about it. And the best way to be subtle about it is to build it into a story. So for example, you tell her about how you felt when you decided to play a particular sport as a hobby instead of as a career. So it's like, oh, okay, he could have been a football player, or hockey player, but he chose not to, or whatever it might be. You don't have to overtly say that you were a sports star. It's implied. If you could have done such sport as a career, then obviously you were good enough to be able to do such sport as a career. Stories are a great way to impress her and provide proofs of your value. And yes, she has to provide proofs of her value. I've said that in many videos, filter, filter, filter. She's got to be good enough for you. And just a little side note here, you should always be evaluating her for her value. Does she qualify for you? That's your mindset. But in the meantime, you also have to know this stuff, what's turning her off. Anyways, back to stories. Stories are a great way of proving your value while also showing her proof of 
communication skills, social skills, and vulnerability. Traits all high value women want. But telling her a list of traits that you have that she should be impressed by is like an insecure job applicant applying for a position above his pay grade. And this brings us to number three, using logic. Women aren't logical. You know that. I know that. Even women know that. <laughs> now, logic is a valuable trait, no doubt. And women actually do value it in men. We need that from men because we're not as logical. But when it comes to using logic on us, a little bit different story, not as effective for getting her ready for physical intimacy. Whether by nature or nurture, women are more emotional than men. We are more emotionally triggered. We are used to being able to go there. So trying to use logic to reason with a woman on why she should like you or agree with you or do the thing you want her to do ain't gonna work. And is one of the worst things you can do because it just frustrates her and turns her off. And again, this goes back to the more she feels you needing to prove your worth, the more she'll question your worth. Women mirror your feelings about yourself. So if you're courting a woman and feel like she's out of your league, she's going to feel that too. And it's going to register somewhere in her body, but she's not going to understand why, even if you've got a list of everything that's amazing about you. You could have a whole spreadsheet of reasons why she should choose you, but that's not going to work. However, if you're vetting her, then she's going to question her own worth and she's going to try to prove to you why she's worth it. And, the more she chooses you, the more she's likely to follow through with that choice. As I spit on myself in excitement. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. This is like, like there was a real naughty in that one. <coughs> Moving on. Okay, now here's a really key important point. You cannot make a woman attracted to you if there's no chance of it whatsoever. But, <laughs> you can turn a woman off who would have otherwise been attracted to you. Okay, so these are for the fence sitters. There's some times where she's going to, no matter what you do, she's going to be attracted. And I'll share a little bit about that in a minute. And then there's other times where no matter what you do, she's definitely not going to be attracted. It's just not going to happen. But there's those times where she could be attracted and she's kind of attracted, or you're definitely at least not a definite no, but she's kind of watching for signs that push her over into the yes or the no. And if you're in a committed relationship and trying to use logic on a woman, it's definitely not going to work because she's going to feel frustrated that you don't understand her. Emotional, women are emotional. You got to appeal to those emotional triggers in a good way sometimes in a little bit of a teasing, playful, naughty, mysterious way, but generally everything's more effective with emotion for women, sometimes for men too, but that's a whole other video. <laughs> so just curious, have you ever tried to use logic to convince a girl to like you or to do something you wanted her to? If you have, share your stories in the comments. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Thanks. Okay. Now the next two are a bit more common in committed relationships, but you'll want to pay attention to them early on or your relationship or potential relationship will risk failure. Four, being too critical. So in the flirting and courting stage, it's natural and effective to offer a little bit of push-pull. So push-pull is exactly what it sounds like. It's where you kind of push her away and pull her in. Or sure, like, like when you're fishing, let out the line, reel her back in. So <laughs> yes, that's where the little bit of roller coaster comes in initially because you're creating mystery and you're not being too needy. It provides a little bit of emotional stimulation, both things women need. 
by creating a vibe of uncertainty. And this is actually a good thing. Women are typically, at least initially, more attracted to men whose feelings about them are uncertain. Just reality land. We all like a challenge. Someone they have to prove their worth to. Key point. When a woman feels she has proven her worth to a man and gotten him, she's more likely to be committed to the success of the relationship. So when it's her choice, not her relenting to you chasing her. But when you push pull by being overtly critical too much, too often, or for too long, then she will eventually feel beaten down emotionally, unappreciated, and potentially even resentful. None of those things are things that turn a woman on and get her ready for intimacy. But guess what? The opposite is equally as bad. So after I share this one, then I'll share with you the one time you don't have to do anything but show up and she'll be ready for you. But just before we get there, let's look at number five, being too nice. So if you're in the flirting courting stage, being too nice will come off as being insecure, needy, and not high value enough for her, as we've already described. So if you're trying too hard or you're too nice, that's not going to come across as confident and high value or even necessarily genuine. And it gives her no opportunity to win you over. If you're busy trying to win her over the whole time, she doesn't have to chase you or prove her worth to you or feel like it's her choice. And for you guys who are already in a committed relationship, especially if it's long-term, remember the saying, happy wife, happy life? No, some of you've learned that this is actually not true. The ultimate ratio of positives to negatives is between five and 10 positives for every one negative interaction in a relationship. If you have fewer than five positives, she's gonna feel undervalued, bitter and resentful eventually. But if you have more than 10 or 11 positives for every one negative interaction or criticism, then she's gonna take you for granted. And here's what often happens. <sighs> instead of standing up for yourself, instead of fighting for something that may or may not be that important. That's what I hear from guys who've been in relationships for even as short as two or three years. It's just not worth the fight. If you throw in the towel every time, she'll just keep pushing further and further. She also won't respect you as a man, which makes her test you more and more. No respect equals no attraction, which will frustrate her because she doesn't understand that. So then she's like, but not attracted. Remember, Women need at least as much mental, physical, and emotional stimulation as men do. If everything's so easy, beasy, preasy, pleasy, went her easy, back and easy, then there's no stimulation. And she'll also see you putting your balls in her purse. So if you're being too nice, it's probably not really that you genuinely want to be too nice. It's more likely that you've given up fighting and you put your balls in her purse. Sorry, that's the way you know it. Comment if you know what I'm talking about. Which brings us to key point. Agreeing with everything and letting her do whatever she wants may save you from immediate conflict, but it separates you from intimacy and true connection in the long run. And again, key point. If you've taken the path of passive compliance by letting her have everything she wants and always getting her way, especially when it's bad behavior, she'll lose respect and attraction to you. Okay, so as promised, when do you have to do nothing but just show up? Here it is. So women need a whole bunch of different things, mentally, emotionally, physically, to be ready for physical intimacy. Now, if she's just ready and you haven't done anything, you'd be like, I don't, I don't know what happened, but I'll go for it. Well, she's prepared herself. So she's either put herself in the mood by doing whatever she needs to do. And I actually did a, a 30 point, how to be more feminine, beautiful. So see, it's not just about the guys, but that's on my, my women's blog. 
So yeah, there's some advice for ladies, how to be more feminine and beautiful, 30 things, and also how to get to that state so you can be ready for intimacy and femininity. Anyways, so if she's done all the things she needs to do on her own and she's just there and ready, you don't have to do anything but not screw it up. This will sometimes happen when she's at the club at closing. She already knew before going out she wanted to get some. You don't have to do anything but show up and not screw up. So it's not so much because you turned her on, it's because she did. She did all the prep work for you, or most of it. All right, so be honest. How many of these things that are turning women off are you still doing? Being too overtly sexual, when not appropriate. Overtly bragging, mm. using logic to convince her, <laughs> or being too critical or too nice. Let me know. And yeah, I know what you're thinking. Women are just too much work. It's not worth the effort. The juice isn't worth the squeeze. I know that. <laughs> I'm a woman. But I'm not here to tell you you have to be in a relationship. I'm just here to help you decode women so if you do want to be in a relationship, then you can find the right woman and keep the right woman and settle down without settling. So thanks for being here and God bless.